I'll get there about three hours before tip. And I'll walk in uh, to five serve form and I'll see all those like whatever color they are, green t-shirts or white t-shirts on every single <laughs> seat at five serve. And, um, and that just energizes me because you know it's time, right? This is our team, you know? And, and you and I, Zora, whoever, um, Dave Kane on the radio side, like, like we know this team better than any other broadcaster that's gonna talk about this team in the playoffs, you know? Because we've watched every second of every minute of every game here this year. That's exciting to me, especially when a team, like you said, has a chance to win a championship. First of all, thank you for joining us with Chopping It Up with Old School. Yeah. Can, can you give me a little chop it up? Got a little chop. Is, that, is that what we do? Nah, is that what you do? I, I just mean, feel like how to get everybody. I am, I am used to introducing you right. on our broadcast. Now you got to introduce me, I guess, and you got notes and everything. I got, and yeah, just some, some, some gentle. I, I feel like I know a lot about you, but there's some things that I was thinking about, Lisa, that, that, that I didn't even know. First of all, yeah. with, with you, when did you first know? that this is what you wanted to do? When did it first occur to you that broadcasting is something I want to pursue full time? You know, I always thought I was going to be the, the basketball player that, that played for the rest of my life. So everyone says, you know, a lot of times with broadcasters, it's, it's a really kind of weird sort of world. Like I know people who are in the business who knew at like five or six or seven years old and they watch games and they said, that's what I want to do. Well, when I watched games at five or six or seven years old, I watched it from a player's perspective. I never watched it from a broadcaster's perspective. And so I think it was in college when I started to play a backup point guard role and I realized okay. that I wasn't going to be able to play this for the rest of my life. And, and quite frankly, in the time, it was in the 90s, I'll date myself, but in the 90s, WNBA was just starting out. There wasn't a whole lot of professional opportunities for women. So I kind of knew that my career path was going to come to a close probably in, in college. And so I think it was right around then where I thought I like journalism, I like sports. I thought about coaching actually. Okay. There was a time, because my dad was my high school coach, so I said there was a time I'd be a lawyer, a broadcaster, or a coach. And so, you know, I had all these different directions, so I went broadcasting, and the rest is history, I guess. I think that's why we get into all these kind of detailed loophole type of arguments, because uh, uh, being an attorney was something that, that I'm yeah. interested in, and I love court TV, and love yeah. to hear oh, yeah. cases being talked about. But you mentioned your dad being your coach. Just quickly, my dad was my coach. Okay. Uh, he was a coach uh, in high school basketball, didn't coach me in high school, but he was a guy that taught me and developed me and coached all my my, my little league teams and all that. How was it for you playing for your dad? What I hated it. it. <laughs> From like, I mean, but well, he coached me as a little kid, MJ, right. and so it was like. But in in high school, that was the big one. Yeah. Um, my high school team didn't have any success, and so that was one of the reasons why no one else wanted that job. So I had an, an older sister who was two years older than me, and he wanted, he, he looked around, you know, to his right and his left, and he thought there's no one else who's gonna have a chance to give them a good opportunity. So he became the high school coach with no winning success mm. at all. Um, and then by the time I'm a freshman, I'm on the varsity. So you can imagine how that goes. Like this, this freshman kid and sophomore kid, her dad's the coach, and they all think, well, you're on the team and you're on the varsity because your dad's the coach. So what did my dad do? My dad was the hardest on me. Right. And, and I remember specifically one time I was a freshman, it was halftime, we were playing poorly. I had, I was sitting like this and I had my towel up like this, so it was covering my mouth. And my dad said, is this funny? Is this funny to you? And I wasn't laughing, you know, but he had to always make me an example. And so freshman, sophomore year, I hated playing for him because of that. I always felt picked on, I, you know, for no reason. Right. And then as I got older, I realized why he was doing it. Junior, senior year, loved it. Um, because I had earned that right, you know, to be on the varsity um, and, and understood him and he understood me a little bit. And uh, we had a winning season for the first time in okay. school history. Okay. We got to the state semifinals <laughs> okay, bye, bye, bye. For, for the first time in school history. So it's, uh, it had a happy ending. With you as sure. a point guard. So yeah. You, the ball was in your hands. Yep. You, were, you were running yep. the show and calling oh, yeah. the shots. Oh, yeah. And then you went on to college. And how did that happen, the recruitment and all that? How did that yeah. happen? Yeah. I, well, I always... You know, I, I grew up watching the Big Ten. I grew up in the state of Michigan, so always grew up as a Big Ten person, so always kind of wanted to play in the Big Ten. And one of my biggest offers was Northwestern. You know, I had some other mid-major offers, and, uh, and so it was, it was close enough to home that it made me feel good, but it wasn't too close that I'd be going and bugging mom to do laundry yeah. like every day, you know? It was like two and a half hours away from where I grew up in like Kalamazoo, Portage, Michigan. 
Um, so I loved it. I had a great school, um, great journalism school, yeah. right, you know, a city of Chicago, right on the Lake Michigan. It's a great sports town. So everything just kind of fits. That's why I chose that. Did you major in journalism right off the bat? Did you choose journalism? No, not until my sophomore year. Okay. Not until my sophomore year. I just kind of wanted to figure out, um, like, like I mentioned, law. You know, do I want to yeah. be a lawyer? Do I want to go into journalism? And my dad was also a journalist. He like wrote a you know a column for a newspaper, and so we've always had that kind of connection. Right. You know, my dad was a, a journalist. He was also a coach, so we've always kind of had that connection. I probably had it in my blood then because of that. But what makes Northwestern such a special place for for journalists? I mean, there's a, just because a, a it's, it's, like journal- it's the school. It's the journalism. It's the journalism school. MJ. But, but can, we, we'll, we're better than Syracuse. I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't want to brag. I don't want to brag. But but we like to say that we're we're the best journalism school in the country. Any other known broadcasters, journalists that you were contemporaries with at Northwestern? Um, Peter Central? Alexander, okay. actually. Right, right. Who, right. NBC. Um, yeah, yep, yeah, yeah. yep. And so we went to school together. Um, you know, I mean, before me, it's Michael Wilbon, it's right. Brent Musburger, it's it's wow. it's all of those people. You know, so um, you know, I joke about Syracuse, but. It, th- when you pair up the alums from both schools, it is it is pretty impressive. Right, yeah. But you know they put you in the real world. That's the good thing about Northwestern is they have internships where you go and you work for a newspaper or a TV station or a magazine for like two to three months. Okay. And so you're in the. It's not just you're in the classroom. Right. Like you are a journalist, and that's one of the things I think that they're ahead of the game. Who are your role models? I mean, just in, for, for in college, when once you knew this is what you wanted to yeah. do. Yeah. Who'd you, you know, really I like to watch and, and, and I uh, I didn't know I wanted to do play by play until much later. So I thought I was going to be like a Sports Center anchor. Right. So I always grew up watching Sports Center, and that was like when it was like a reoccurring episode, you know, and it was the same one, like 2 a.m. to right. like 8 a.m. And I would just sit there and eat my cereal and watch that. So I actually loved Robin Roberts okay. as a woman because you know she played basketball. She had that kind of charisma. So for me, when I watch a woman on TV, and, and I didn't know this was going to translate for me later in life, but I call it the believability factor. And I don't know why I have it for women versus men. Um, but when I watch Robin Roberts, five seconds, I believe her. I know she knows what she's talking about. She just commands the room, you know? And she was the first woman who stood out to me when I watched Sports Center or when I watched TV. Yeah. And, and, and so. You watch Robin Roberts. How much of a, resp- of a responsibility did you feel now, being the trailblazer that you are, the first woman to, to call NBA uh, games for a professional team, play by play? Uh, how much do you feel that responsibility for those behind you, women and men, but, yeah. but mainly, yeah. mainly women? I mean, I'm sh- I always get it wherever we go. I mean, <laughs> the, the ladies and, and men too, but mainly the ladies yeah. and sometimes little girls. I mean, they just. They just get so effusive in your, their praise and, and, mm-hmm. and, and, and just worship you in terms of what you're doing. Well, I mean, that's a little stretch. No, no, no. I'm sorry. no. <laughs> I wish it was. No, I get tired of it, as a matter of fact. But no, no, no. But seriously, though, no, but it, it, yeah. it's, it's out there. It's, a, it's yeah. a big, big contingent of people that really, really respect and, and love the work that you do. But, but how much of a responsibility do you feel just to, I don't know, to, yeah. be, to be an example, to be a role model? Does that factor into it at all? So when I do the job, I understand what it means to be a role model, right? But when I do the job, Marcus, I can't think of it that way. You know, when I sit next to you and we're we're talking hoops and, and, you know, we're we're calling a game, I can't always put on a headset and think, oh man, I'm being a role model today. Or I, you know, so I'm reminded of it when I'm asked about it. Or I'm reminded of it as we're walking out of the arena and like like a little girl comes up to me and and, and says, "I, I really, you know, love what you're doing. Um, a, a dad comes up to me and even says, like, my son right. has watched what you're doing. We appreciate what you're doing. I'm reminded of it in that way. Um, I hate, I honestly, I appreciate being the first. I hate being the first. Does that make sense? Because there is that responsibility, but you're always going to be tagged with that. Mm. You're always going to be tagged with that. I'm always going to be the first. So it's Lisa is a female broadcaster instead of Lisa is a broadcaster. And that's the next step, right? Like, I I just don't wanna be looked at as a first female broadcaster. Like, when I get introduced, if I'm speaking at an event, I'm always introduced as the first this, the first that, the first this. Someday I just wanna be introduced as the Bucks broadcaster. 
yeah, you know. I understand that. And yeah. uh, and I understand the responsibility. That's not to shed the responsibility that you have on your shoulders, and you have to do a, a job really well in order to open up doors for others. Um, but for me personally, I can't think of it that way because then I'm not doing the job, you know. Yeah. And, and then we're not making progress. Right. If I'm just sitting in that, in the first, and the female, and all that. If I'm sitting in that, I'm not making progress in that so, way. Something that I was just informed about recently, the Lisa Byington Award. Yeah. <laughs> what the? <laughs> what's going on? You're not <laughs> eligible. Yeah, Otherwise, the, you'd be, well, you'd be well, right in what, line. What's no. going on? What's going so, on? Explain um, that to us. Was it my idea? Um, but Kevin Warren, the commissioner, and uh, who just walked out you know, of the, of the Big Ten Conference to pursue other things, but it was his idea. So when the Bucks hired me, um, he said, you know what, we need to do something to also open up doors for women. And so unbeknownst to me, so it was actually last year uh, for our first preseason game in Memphis. Remember that one that only went three quarters yeah, because yeah, of the fire, the fire alarm, alarm and, and whatever? Yeah, right, right. So it was, wings and yeah, all yeah, 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 yeah. So it was the morning of that game. So it's my first, even though it's a preseason game, it's my first time working with you. It's my first time calling this team, you know? So I was nervous, and then I was told that I had this surprise Zoom that I got to be on at like 10 a.m. Uh, my bosses at um, Big Ten Network had told me, we're not going to tell you what it is. It's, it's, it's good, whatever. So I'm sitting there looking at the screen. It's black. I don't know. You know, it's like pulling back the, <laughs> the, the curtain who's going to be there. And all of a sudden, uh, Commissioner Warren is sitting on the other side. Wow. And I thought I got called into the principal's office. <laughs> I'm thinking, like, what did I say on the air? Um, and he said, what we want to do is, is we want to honor a college female broadcaster at one of the Big Ten schools, one of the 14 Big Ten schools that's involved in the Student U program. And we're going to give them a full-fledged Big Ten network experience and use you as a mentor, um, give her feedback. And so they call it the Lisa Byington Award. That's so great. we give it out every spring, every summer. This is year two of it. And, um, and I will stay connected to who, you know, what each award winner is. I will stay connected to them and however they need me, whether it's feedback or relationship networking, but they get a full day yeah. wow. to record wow. stuff, whatever. Um, and so it's a great opportunity because I just needed someone to believe in me, Marcus. And so hopefully that gives them a door open you know that they know who's that, that person that believe in you who's that that if you can yeah take it back in, in terms of coaches of you know career. coaches okay coaches um but as a people broadcast, in the, but yeah broadcast. people in, in in the broadcasting business um you know they're uh one of my bosses at big 10 network came to me and asked me to do football college football wow. for the first time as a play-by-play -play. and it's something i always thought about but it wasn't something that i that i had the courage to make that jump, you know? And so it meant a lot for a man, because because gender allies are just as important to right. this story, right? Um, it meant just as much for a, a male boss to come to me and say, hey, Lisa, do you want to do play-by-play -play for college football? Um, bosses at CBS or Turner asking me to make the jump from being a sideline reporter for the NCAA tournament to a play-by-play -play right. that had never been done before, you know? I still, to this day, say that doing those eight games for the first round for the NCAA tournament and you got to study for three <laughs> days, like that is the hardest yeah. thing that I have to do, but it's also one of the most satisfying. And so to have, um, you know, men and women who are involved in that choice, men and women, to come to me and say, hey, Lisa, you know what? You're, you've been sidelined for us for a few years, but we think you can make this jump. No, well, you, like, you that's, do, all, that's all it takes. You do a great job of it. Now, now you, you, we talked about uh, the Bucks and, and, and um, Working here in Milwaukee, playoff time is here, finally. I mean, for you as as a play-by-play -play analyst, me, is there any difference for you playoff versus regular season? If there is, what's the difference? The energy? Is there anything? Is there a feeling? Or, yeah. For me, I'm excited. I mean, yeah. this, this is just yeah, yeah, yeah. this is what I've been waiting for all year long, and, and especially yep. with this team and the prospects that we have. Yep. But for you, just what's the feeling going on? Emotionally? This is where I think it's the most fun to be a part of a team. Because this is this is our team, you know, and and you and I, Zora, whoever, um, Dave Kane on the radio side, like like we know this team better than any other broadcaster that's going to talk about this team in the playoffs, you know, because we've watched every second of every minute of every game here this year, 
that's exciting to me, especially when a team, like you said, has a chance to win a championship. Um, but you just feel it different. So I, I, you know, I like to get to the arena super early. I'll get there, I'll get there about three hours before tip. And I'll walk in uh, to Five Surf Forum and I'll see all those, like whatever color they are, green t-shirts or white t-shirts on every single <laughs> seat at Five Surf. And, um, and that just energizes me yeah. because you know it's time, right? And um, it's championship time. And, and this is, and, and you can speak to this better than me, but this is, these are some of the glory years, right? Of Milwaukee yeah. Bucks basketball that we're in. Um, a guy like Giannis, you know, to have the supporting cast that he has and the, and the stars and the superstars to surround him. This is a, this is a special time and, um, and this is winning time. And I'll take it for granted at all. Giannis, I mean, does it ever get to a point where, and I, and, and I asked this question, but I know for me it doesn't. I mean, but, but it's, you can almost take his greatness for granted sometimes. I mean, uh, so the 50 point games or the triple yeah. doubles, I mean, for me, it's not like I take it for granted, but it's no longer like I'm just blown away by yeah. it. But, but being able to, to yeah. watch a guy like Giannis call his games, how special yeah. is that for you? I get chills. Yeah. You know, wow. when, I, when I would watch him before I had this job, you, you know, you do one of these, like his dunks, or like you know it's coming, and you're like at the, you literally, there are a few players to me, because we watch so much basketball and we watch so much sports, there are, there are a few players that have a physical reaction, that I have a physical reaction watching. You know, and I get out of my seat and I can feel chills in my arms. Um, he just is a is a special kind of player that that elevates everyone, his teammates to the moment, to the arena, to the game. Um, and this is what I appreciate about him is that he can fail and he has thrived off of failing. And that's one of the things that I've learned in, in, in covering him is is he is not scared of that. He's not scared of missing a free throw. He's not scared of losing a game. Um, he's not scared of being criticized. It, it actually fuels him and, and, and makes him better. And, and that's part of his story. And that's part of his greatness, in yeah, my and, opinion. And, and even physical confrontation, there was a game, I forgot, I forgot who it was, but somebody, a hard foul, knocked him down and he went right back at the guy the very next play. And that's one of the things we yeah. always talk about is yeah. that he gets right back in there and, and just uh, he has even more resolve uh -huh. to, to, to succeed that next He plays summer. basketball like a football player. Oh, that's a great point. You know? Yeah. yeah. You know, he takes the contact. And people call games like he's a football player. Yeah. Like, it's not the first contact right. where they call a foul. Like, for most players, it's got to be the second, the third, the fourth. Because right. he takes it. He's so strong. Yeah. And he takes it so well that he has to take a beating for a call to But to even come his for approach, him. I mean, that's a great point about him and that football mentality because his approach about attacking the body, attacking oh, yeah. the angles oh, yeah. and the seeing angles, the body. The angles, the hips. The initiating contact, yeah. that's, that's so much a part of his game. Yeah. And for him and for you, getting to know him as a person, uh -huh. just your impressions of him, just. He's so thoughtful. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I was struck, so we, we took a trip to California and, uh, you know, Drew Holiday had invited us to his house. And so he sat down um, at our table, Josh Oppenheimer, some other coaches were there. And he got emotional talking about a picture that he saw in Drew's weight room about, mm -hmm. he's like, you know, I go into so many weight rooms and, and I can, and I, everyone can have like a picture of themselves. Um, Drew had a picture of, you know, Brooke and uh, Chris helping Giannis up. PJ Tucker, I think was mm -hmm. in the shot. And, and Giannis said he could have picked any picture in the world. He could have picked a picture of himself, his wife, his kid, you know, right. whatever in his weight room. He picked a picture of helping up me. And so I was just struck at how gratifying that was for him to have teammates who appreciate him, you know? Um, and not a lot of superstars, I think, are, are, are plugged into something like that. Not a lot of superstars would appreciate yeah. something like that. And, and, and that, to me, showed what kind of a great teammate Giannis is. Giannis, in order to cement his legacy, how many championships does he have to Oof, win over the next That's the question, isn't it? Ten years. Let's say he plays 20 years. He's 10 years in. How many think it'll, it'll At take At least one more. Okay. Right? At least one more. Um, when you get into the multi-championship level, that's, that's when the, the legacy discussion begins. Not just, you know, he was, he was a great player in the league. I think it's got to be three or more 
in mm -hmm. my opinion. Um, then you put yourself up with, with the greats, right? Yeah. Um, Bird and Magic yeah. and Kareem yeah. and yeah, Russell and yeah. Yeah, all those all guys. All the Celtics, yeah. All, all the Celtics. The Robert Ory. <laughs> or the, the <laughs> Lakers or, you know, I mean, um, you know, that was, that was LeBron's challenge, right? Yeah. Great player, had to win a championship. One wasn't enough for him, you know, um, and one wouldn't have been enough for him. Uh, the, you know, the, the scoring title without the championships, I don't think are, would have been enough for people to extend their conversation about legacy, you know, greatest of all time, that sort of thing. And, and Giannis, Giannis has to get there. What do you think for you? What do you I think, think the three. Three. I mean, three I mean two would be great. I think two is fine, but if he gets to three, then it's automatically done. Then yeah. He goes down as well as he yeah. goes. You know, the two time MVP and the 50 point game yep. in, in a six yep. game closeout right there sets him apart. But mm -hmm. if he wins two, that's great. Wins three, it's a done deal. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. without question. Without question. The seven all stars, too. That yeah. always seems yeah. to be kind of a, a measuring stick. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, look, you know, it's playoff time. I'm. Uh, I am so anxious to see what's going to happen. We've been talking about this since October when the season tipped off. We have. Playoff time. That's, that's, when, <laughs> when, that's, when, that's what this team is geared for. So yeah. now that we're here, uh, let's go out here and do it. Have a good time. And let's man, do it's it, man. It's been a pleasure, man. All right. It's been great work. Thanks for you. having me on. Oh, thank you for Chopping it up, right? Chopping it up. Chopping it up. Bye, bye, bye. <laughs> <laughs>